Hey guys, a few of you have asked for tips on setting up your home theater or specifically your speakers. Wife's away, so I'm gonna play. I got free reign of the living room right now, so it's time to move around some furniture, move around the speakers especially, start doing a lot of testing without her complaining about the noise. I'm gonna give you some tips. I'm gonna show you how I do it. There are a lot of different ways you can do it. Unfortunately, there are a lot of variables. And there are pros and cons to every choice you're going to make. Now, this is not just, uh, I'm not an expert at this, okay? I'm not working in the industry, just been doing it for a long time for my own pleasure. So these are things I've learned just from experience, but more so from actual experts in the fields. Back in the day, tons of magazine articles. Remember those? Those were great. Now, blogs, um, forums, other people doing videos, experts working at speaker companies especially, giving their little tips and tricks. So I'm gonna to try to put it all together from scratch. So no matter what you've got, you can get the best out of it for your situation. And I'm gonna talk about how I'm doing it and why, and why you may wanna do things differently. So this is what I have to work with. It is a rectangular room. Unfortunately, I'm working width-wise. This, number one, is bad okay if you have the option always put your speakers and work lengthwise if i could do that man things would be so much easier it would probably sound better but i would have so many more options for where to place things but it's not an option here so this is what i have to make the best of just know that if you have a rectangular room your best audio options are lengthwise that's number one but okay let's say you're working in a square room or a rectangular room and you're going widthwise like this. So you've got your speakers at one end of the room and I've got things roughed in here. I've, I've already started and I just decided to do the video. So I'm gonna talk about a couple things I've already done, but I still have a lot to do. This is tuning right now just for two channel stereo. I've got the two tower speakers here. Those are the only things playing. I don't even have the sub plugged in right now. The rear surrounds are not working. I mean, I've got them turned off. And I have as much processing turned off as possible. Center channel is not in play. I've just been doing a lot of test listening. I'm gonna go through some songs that I use and some specific things in them that I'm listening for. And again, I'm not discovering these. These are tried and true test tracks that a lot of others recommend and use. Before we get into testing, we need to address the signal source. This is absolutely critical. We need to do two things, have a high quality signal coming into whatever equipment you're using, and it has to be set up correctly in order for the purest sound possible to come out of the speakers. So we're actually measuring the sounds from the speakers and not having it tainted by any kind of processing. Now, the music itself, I prefer on this particular setup, Spotify Connect. It is a very high quality source. I have to use my other thumb here. And it broadcasts over Wi-Fi. That is incredibly important. There are basically two ways you can stream information uh, over your network to your device, either Bluetooth directly from a device like your tablet or phone, or via Wi-Fi or wired ethernet, same thing there, either through your NAS or a streaming service like Spotify or Tidal or anything else like that. Now, first and foremost, this is not high quality enough of a system that I can hear the difference between Spotify Connect at the best quality and lossless like Tidal or Flack or direct from a CD. So this is certainly good enough for me and I think it's gonna be good enough for a lot of people. Spotify Connect uses the direct network service to go between the Spotify servers and your equipment. You are not streaming from your tablet here or your phone. That's the difference between something like AirPlay or Bluetooth Direct. If you have a Bluetooth dongle or you're connecting to your equipment directly from Bluetooth, that is the worst possible connection. It's low quality, low bandwidth. You're not getting anywhere near high quality enough signal to be making critical listening choices. So forget Bluetooth, forget AirPlay. <clears throat> Either play it direct, you know, physical media, or direct network connect to your computer, or use anything that uses Wi-Fi like Spotify Connect, and you're gonna get a great signal, 
okay? So that's what I'm using here. And of course, Spotify Connect, Spotify itself, my account, uh, is the top quality account and everything is configured for the best quality sound. Also very important, no EQ or anything like that. And that's, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff and you need to have that no matter what. Now the device, every, every brand and some even generations are gonna have different ways of turning off processing. And this particular receiver, it's a fairly modern Yamaha and it has a feature called Pure Direct. You can get it through the app, either on your phone or tablet, or you can use the Yamaha remote, but I don't really find I need to use a remote for a whole lot of stuff. Now in the Yamaha app, we're just gonna open it up and it's going to connect to the receiver. And here's where we see all the different settings for the basic control of the receiver. First of all, you wanna turn any trim off. Your tone and treble control, your treble and bass controls, your tone control, set them to zero. Make sure the extra bass is off, of course. Subwoofer, we're not using, doesn't matter, but it should be zeroed. If you've done any kind of room correction, you're gonna see the YPAO volume selection available. We're not even concerned with that because we're gonna be disabling everything. Down here, Pure Direct is what we want. We're gonna turn that to on. What that's gonna do is bypass as much processing as possible and take the signal source direct from the music coming in over Wi-Fi, go through the volume control and the internal DACs, and that's it. No DSP, no room correction, no EQ, nothing. So that's as direct as possible. So the sound that we're gonna be judging is only affected by the speakers, the room, your listening position, and the speaker placement. So that's the first step is making sure that we've got the source ready to listen to. The first thing that you have to do is figure out not only where you're gonna place stuff generally, but how far apart your speakers are gonna be. That's step number one. This is gonna give you what's called the stereo image. The stereo image is the illusion that there is something centered in between the speakers. For example, if you play a mono signal, like an AM radio station, for example, if you have everything set absolutely perfectly, the sound should only come directly in between the speakers, and that's it. There should be a clear pinpoint audio source right in between those speakers. If it's not, something is wrong. Now, I do have a test track that I'll talk about in a second that can give you that without having to tune into an AM station, but what we're gonna set up now is called the triangle. Now there are different schools of thought. There is absolutely no set in stone rule for this, but a good place to start is an isosceles triangle. Equal distance between the speakers to your ears. And I mean to your ears, and you need to use a tape measure for this. Okay, break out the tape measure. And yes, some of this is easier with two people, but you can do it alone, I'm doing it alone. The measurement between the speakers is to the center of the drivers, okay? If Now, first of all, these are Klipsch reference series, and all their drivers are centered. So I've got the two woofers and the tweeter. You may have an offset tweeter. That's pretty common on some speakers. Don't use that in that case, all right? You wanna go from the, the center of the speaker. So if you've got a driver you can easily measure from, like this center screw point right there. That's perfect to measure from. So that's where you put one end of the tape measure and you go to the other one. That is the distance between your speakers. Now, the distance to you is measured from the very front of the speaker cabinet. Okay, this is the plane of audio over to your actual ear. So sit down on the couch and actually pay attention and look to where you're sitting on the couch. Where are your ears? My ears are about where my shoulders are. So they're, you know, about right here. So I'm not gonna be measuring to the back of the couch. I'm not gonna be measuring to the front of the couch. I'm gonna measure to where my ears are. And this is important down to a couple inches. You do need to be that precise for best results. This is another important thing. There's no black and white, right and wrong here. Everything has pros and cons. The biggest thing you need to take away from this is if you're setting up for best performance for two channel stereo results, 
It's not going to be great for home theater. It'll be good, but it won't be great. If you set up for great home theater, it won't be good for two channel stereo. If you even have a good stereo image, it'll sound like good music. You're still playing the same great songs, but you're not going to get the best performance. It's not possible. They are mutually exclusive. So you need to first prioritize which is most important to you. Me, I am prioritizing for music. So I'm going to have the best possible stereo image and then home theater. It's still going to be really good. That's okay with me. But here's why that happens. Setting up for stereo music means there is one seat that is great. No others. I mean, no others. I'm going to be sitting in the middle of the couch, technically not even in one of the seats. Okay. Now the, I'll get to this a little later, but the processing of the receiver may allow me to shift that great seat over to one or the other but it's still just gonna be one or the other. Literally one spot in the room within just a few inches, the size of your head is the best spot once you get done for stereo music. And that's it. Home theater uses a center channel to anchor that center sound. So you don't have to have this precise alignment to make that stereo image. Now in a home theater, if you set up for great sound, these speakers are not going to be exactly positioned where they would be for stereo sound because in home theater, the goal is to have good sound in all seats. So I would want all four of these seats, for example, to have really good sound for watching a movie. Ideally for home theater, they would be spread farther apart because they're not producing a stereo image. They're just producing sound and music and effects. And you want a wider sound stage and I wouldn't have them towed in like this. They would be pointing uh, a little more out, not quite straight, but a little more out for a wider sound stage for the movie, but that kills the stereo image. So you have to prioritize me. Like I said, going for music, it's still going to give a great home theater sound, especially for the wife and I on the couch, less so on the chairs. Definitely, definitely less so on the chairs, but that's okay. Those are just for occasional guests. All right, so getting that out of the way, the first thing we do is set our distance apart. Like I said, the, the good base point is the isosceles triangle. However, that's not a set and fast rule. A lot of other people like percentages in the 80%, meaning you have less space between the speakers than you have to your couch. Do some experimentation. Sometimes the difference, and that's the case here, it's very subtle. Sometimes it's going to be greater and you're definitely going to prefer, you know, one specific position over another, but start with equal distances. There is one fast, hard and fast rule. Never spread your speakers farther apart than the distance to your ears, because that quickly, very quickly within inches kills the stereo image. The closer together you have them in relation to your seating position, the more anchored that stereo image is going to be. However, the sound stage also gets narrower. So you have to physically play. That's what we're doing today. This is where I found I like mine. These are uh, just under 90%. It's like 89 point something percent. Okay. That's where it sounds best to my ears. It may not be the very best for your ears. You have to play around. And what I did is literally put the speakers in a position, sit down, play music, listen to specific parts of specific songs for things I'm looking for. Stop the music, move the speakers an inch or so, sit back down, listen, rinse and repeat over and over and over, making small changes until you figure out what you like. Now you're going to hit a certain point. And this is true of everything I'm going to be doing where it gets worse, you know, better or worse. It's subjective, whatever you're looking for. So you, you do whatever you're doing until it gets worse and then you go back and that's your point. Okay. So setting the distance between your speakers is the first thing you do. Don't worry about toe in at this point. You can, you can point them straight apart, point them straight ahead while you're doing the distance. Okay. Don't worry about that. Or you can point them directly at you. Point is don't change the toe in during this procedure. All you're looking for is that centered stereo image. And this is the song I want you to use for that by Nora Jones called little room. 
and it has an absolutely centered stereo image when you have it right. I'm going to turn it down so I don't get a copyright violation here. <laughs> okay, so everything in this song, the music, all the instruments, her voice are coming directly from that center stocking. When I'm sitting back in my listening position, like I said, I've already gone through this step, so this is already done for me, but it sounds like I'm listening to a mono signal. That's what you're looking for, for setting this distance, all right? It doesn't have to be real precise. You're not looking for clarity. You're just looking to make sure it's even. You don't want it sounding like she's quite over there or quite over there, or worse, you can't really pinpoint it. And it's just like sound in the room or sound directly from a speaker. That's what happens when they get too wide, for example. All right, so that's the step you want to do there. Let me pause this. Okay, now to fine tune that, now you get into the toe in. This is where it gets really precise and where it goes from, okay, yeah, it sounds like the, the music is coming from that point to sounding like she's standing a few feet in front of you. Like there's another human being in the room, that, that presence, when your brain is tricked into thinking there is somebody there. That's when it gets really precise. Now, not every speaker is going to be able to do that. I'm, I'm just getting it. I've, I've heard it much easier from much more expensive setups. This is, you know, not that expensive, nothing exotic, but I've heard setups where, oh my God, I mean, you, if you were closing your eyes, you'd swear there's just somebody standing there. You could reach out and touch them. This isn't getting that point, but this certainly pinpoints it. And this is where you play with the toe in, which is the rotation of the speakers, either angled slightly to the side of you or directly at you. Now you might think just pointing directly at you gives you the very best sound. Not in every case, that is gonna vary by the speakers. Different speakers give very different results as far as that goes, mostly depending on the, the tweeter design. There's quite a bit of directionality to the Klipsch horns, that's the whole point of them. But there is, you know, a little leeway. You might find that pointing them directly at you, I should clarify what you wanna do is point the right one at your right ear and the left one at your left ear. Don't point them both, for example, at your nose. That's what I'm talking about. So you might find that's a little harsh, a little bright, a little gritty, a little stinging in your ears. It's just something about it. All right, you can ease it off by towing them out just a little bit. I mean, just go a few degrees. What you do is you use the side of your speaker as a sight line. Where is it pointing? You know, point each one, for example, if I'm looking at this, point each one at the center of each cushion. And that imaginary line is meeting just behind my head. Maybe yours sound a little better meeting just in front of your head. You have to play around. Everything that I'm showing you here, you have to play around. But go very slowly. You know, hit, make that imaginary line move an inch or two inches at a time. Do both equally. Always keep them absolutely symmetrical. And like I said, test, listen, move it, test, listen. It's going to be a point where it gets worse. It'll pinpoint focus and then it'll start to diffuse. Go back, get your best point and you're there. I'm not there yet. I still have to fine tune that in. That's the point where I decided, Hey, I better uh, show this on video. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, this didn't give quite a pinpoint. I've heard better. I need to tow these in a little bit more. I just know that from experience. And I've been playing with the position of the couch and I actually have it pulled up forward from the last time I played with the toe in. So I have to adjust for that. Now I'm gonna move these. Let's see where this is sighted right now. This is hitting just to the outside of that center cushion. So I'm gonna move it. I wanna move it just a little bit, maybe to the inner third of the cushion. Let's see where it's hitting now. A little, little more. I've got those pads on the bottom of the speakers with 
plastic on them so they move a little easier than just rubber feet. All right, so that's about in the inner third of that cushion. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just a little at a time. Make sure you sight with the uh, same side of the speaker. This one is actually uh, just about on. So me just playing around, didn't have those exactly right from last time, but like I said, I wasn't done. All right, so here's what you do when you think you have it right. Take a look at the speakers and sit in your listening position. Make sure I'm exactly centered on the couch. Okay, now look down the speakers and look. Make sure you see the same amount of side of the speaker. Okay, that's the way that one looks. I'm just gonna rotate the camera. That's the way that one looks. That looks pretty even. This is a real good indication. Okay, so now we play again. This isn't the only song, of course, you can use, but just take it from me from experience. It works and it's really quick. You don't have to listen to the whole song or anything. That made all the difference in the world. I'm not kidding, that little tiny, tiny toe and change made it sound like her voice was about as wide as all three stockings. And now she sounds like she's actually sitting just behind my fireplace. I've got a little bit of depth. Better speakers, better rooms especially, have a depth to the sound stage. The sound can actually sound like it's coming from behind the speakers. So we've set our speaker distance, we've set our toe in. Now we need to set the distance from the walls. Now I've got an unusual setup here with this fireplace, but you may have something similar. Maybe you've got a big old TV that's sitting in between your speakers. Maybe you've got a huge audio rack or a cabinet or anything blocking the space between the speakers. You're gonna end up in the same situation I am. In this case, you wanna start the speakers flush or just slightly ahead of the wall. And when I say speakers, when you're talking distance for the speakers, you're talking about the front of the speakers, not the back. So when people talk about the distance from the wall, they're talking about measuring from the front face to the wall, not the rear of the speaker. Pay no attention to that, pay no attention to how deep the speakers are. So if you've got a speaker that's two feet deep, the minimum distance you can go to the wall is two feet. But in this case, we want to clear this obstacle. I would not want to start these back against the wall. Other speakers are going to be different. You, you're going to have to test and tune as with all of this, but that's a good starting point. So that's where I ended up starting. And what we're looking for here is mid bass performance and to some extent low bass performance because we are in our pure direct mode. We're passing a full signal to the speakers. So they are producing everything that they can. Basically, we're looking for the best performance possible. Now, bass waves, bass frequencies in a room are waves, and every bass frequency has a different wavelength. The lower bass frequencies are going to be hitting this room in different places than the mid and high bass frequencies. You cannot have one position optimized for every possible frequency. Everything has trade-offs. So what we're gonna be doing is playing a few different songs and looking for the best average, basically. We're gonna looking, I'm gonna be looking for deal breakers. If there's something in a particular song that maybe uh, one song has bass that's just too boomy. Maybe it makes male voices too boomy or the low bass is extended or maybe the mid bass is just dropping out. You know, that's not gonna be the right position, but we're gonna be testing and tuning that. So start flush or just ahead of your obstruction. If you have a plain wall and nothing in between, go ahead and push them all the way back against the wall. Start from there. That's fine to start from. It's probably not gonna, we're, probably not gonna be where you're gonna end up, but we're gonna be moving them a couple inches at a time forward, pulling them straight out. Maintain the same angle. If you have an obscenely close seating position, you may have to tweak your toe in to compensate if you pull them out two feet, for example, but you want that angle to your seating position to be the same. So we're not changing the width, and we're not changing the way the speakers are hitting the listening position. We're just changing the depth from the wall. That's it. So the other end of the room is your seating position. 
And likewise, you've got to move yourself in the exact same way. There are going to be points. And again, a couple inches can make a huge difference. There are going to be points where the base is going to drop out. Those are nulls. There are going to be points where the base is exaggerated, very boomy. Those are peaks. You want to avoid those. You want to be in between those two. And that goes for the speakers and your listening position. If either your listening position or the speakers are not in an optimal location, you're not going to get good sound, period. So both of them must be in the correct positions. Now you can see that roughly my good position in this admittedly bad shaped room is about two feet from the wall from my listening position and about two feet from the front of the speakers to the wall. This is where I'm roughed in. Again, I've done a little bit of work here already, so I know this is approximately where I'm going to end up. I may move an inch or two, but this is going to be about it. So again, start at a point, play your music, listen, move a little bit, listen. You'll get to a point where it gets worse, go back, you know, work it in that way. Now, if you find that you've moved your speakers a foot and nothing changed, guess what? It's your listening position. <laughs> Here's what you do. Once you sit down, you're listening to your song. You're in a, a certain spot here on the couch, you know, just sitting normally. Lean forward. Put your head at the front edge of the couch. Pay attention to what happens. The bass is going to change one way or the other. It's either going to get thinner or it's going to get boomier or it's going to sound just more natural. So that's going to tell you which way you want to go. Likewise, if you're not starting from against the wall on your couch, you can lean your head backwards, you know, go behind the couch, walk behind the couch, stick your head where it would be a foot behind it. See which is better. It's almost never going to be good right up against the wall. So you want to start at least a foot up from the wall. Just as a general rule, there, there's going to be uh, standing wave action there, no matter what the room shape is. And that's never going to work. So start from a foot out, work the couch out in the same way, but you can rough yourself in by leaning and then just pull your seating position somewhere where it's working. Okay. And then when you move the speakers, it's going to make a much more dramatic and easy to hear difference. So let's see what are some good test tracks for doing this. There are a few of them. What you're looking for are songs that have repeatable bass, and you can either do them with fairly mono bass notes or a variety, and they're both good for certain things. Walk on the Wild Side, for example. This has a very recognizable repeating bass line, but not that many notes. And what this is good for is roughing it in because there isn't that much going on and it's really easy to hear the quality of the bass. You can hear the attack of the bass notes and then the decay, and you can hear the little drum taps. Now, when I was roughing this in, this got so thin, it was like somebody just turned the bass knob completely off. It wasn't even close. But sitting in a good position, it's much better. Now, here's a problem with this particular room. The best position for this song, just this particular frequency of bass note, is putting my head right here at the leading edge of the couch. I'm not putting the couch in the middle of the room. It's just not feasible, unfortunately. If this was a longer room, I would have more options because I wouldn't need to put the couch right up to the speakers. I could move the couch backwards because it's a wave. It's hitting at multiple points in the room. In my case, the room is so small, there's only one point. If it was a longer room, there'd be another point, you know, maybe another five feet back and that would be ideal, but I can't do that. So the first thing I did is I moved the couch just because I need to rough it in. I need to, to see what's going on. So I moved the couch up to the middle of the room, you know, really obnoxiously close. Boom. This, this baseline sounded fantastic. Now I don't listen to this song very much. I don't really care. And like I said, if you listen to it, it's only basically one bass note. So it's a very specific frequency. Remember what I said that each frequency has different wavelengths, different songs, that sweet spot, that, that point right here is going to be different. And what I found was 
where my couch is right now is best for the vast majority of songs out there. Some other ones to use. Craftwork, the 2009 remastered version of the model. This has different frequencies. And now, sitting back in the normal position, the low end bass is just pouring through. It's not boomy, but it's reverberating. And what bass notes are in here, they're very electronic, obviously, are absolutely ringing true. And when I move my head forward, there's a little bit of mid bass coming up, but it's not as dramatic as Walk on the Wild Side because it's got multiple tones to it. And overall, it's much better down here. When I move my head up here, that lower bass line completely disappears. It's, it's like somebody actually turned it off. It's like unplugging a sub here, and now it's on. I'm not kidding, that one foot difference, just moving from here to here. Absolutely day and night difference. So another good song to use, Sweet Jezebel, off Ghost of a Chance. Again, a variety of different bass frequencies, very repeatable, extremely easy to listen to and rough this in. All right, so those three are really good, just as test tracks. I mean, I don't, I don't listen to any of them. I don't think they're great songs to actually listen to, but technically they're great for doing this specific work right here. Okay, now you've got all of it roughed in. Now you get to the fine tuning. Here's a couple songs that are really good for this. The motion picture soundtrack, I believe it's from 2006, of the Pink Panther theme. This has a phenomenal sound stage. Just sit back and listen. You should be able to pinpoint and point to every single instrument. Everything should be clear. The bass should not be muddying into the saxophone. The saxophone is dead center, sitting on that green stocking right there. There's a little, I don't it's a cymbal, I don't know what the instrument is called he's hitting it with, but it's right there on the red stocking. I can hear the bass sitting farther back, the background horns kind of coming from over there. This is a very wide sound stage and you can absolutely sound like you're sitting in the front row when it's dialed in. Here's another super easy track to dial us in, Bird on a Wire, the remastered version from Jennifer Warnes. Vocals are just like they're standing in the room. You can hear every little subtle detail of the instruments. Now what you do from here as far as bass and treble and any other processing is personal taste, but this allows you to physically get the room, your listening position and the speakers in the best position to work with whatever you now throw at it. Now you can add in a sub, dial in your bass to whatever volume you want that to mix into, Sub placement is completely separate from speaker placement. I do the sub crawl, I put the sub here on the couch and I crawl around the room to find the best position for it. Mine happened to be right over there. I don't notice too much of a difference moving it a couple feet one way or the other, but you know, that's what works in here. It's not even plugged in. All I'm hearing are these speakers here and it sounds really good. So now that we have our baseline and everything set up as best as possible, now we can go ahead and do the room correction using whatever mic your brand comes with. This is the Yamaha, I'm gonna plug it in. I'm gonna sit it in my seating position and I'm gonna sit the mic right here in this seat. This will set up the exact delays for the speakers to compensate for moving over. So right now the physical sweet spot is in the middle of the couch. This isn't very comfortable. <laughs> I wanna sit in the middle of the cushion. It's not made to sit on this bar and this support on the couch. So by using the room correction, it will basically allow this soundstage to virtually shift over as if I was moving the speakers over a foot or so. And I'll be able to sit here in the couch normally and sound just like I am now sitting on here. But it requires the receiver to do that processing. Most of them in the past several years have this kind of feature. It also EQs 
each specific speaker because the speakers are in different positions in the room. This is also for surround sound, but it's very important for stereo too. This left speaker here, you know, there's not much to the left. I've got glass doors over there. This one over here, I've got nothing. i got a long hallway. So the sound bouncing off of those speakers before they hit my ears is very different. The room correction will take that into account, correct for all the peaks and valleys of each speaker to give a flat response. All we've done is set up the physical image. The sound quality is now what you do, and the room correction is very important for that. It also sets up the distance between uh, all your speakers in your listening position. That's important when you shift away from the very center. I am down to the inch dead center here, but again, not where I'm sitting. So this is where the delays come in and it can also um, correct for any phase variance. Of course, once I plug the sub in, it will tie that in. And uh, you know, it's up to you what you do with your bass management. If you're gonna cross over and use that or run your mains as large and feed them full range sound. If you get this dialed in really well, like these are here, I have no problem running these as large. They go down into the, uh, I'll say mid thirties, very respectably. And you know, I, I have no problem just adding the sub in to add a little bit of extra into that very lowest octave. So that's how I do my speaker setup, my placement and get everything sounding as good as possible. Hope it helps somebody. See ya.